Hey guys, welcome back to Bioinformatics with R. Uh, today we are going to look at another or a different type of RNA-seq analysis for differential gene expression. We're going to look at DE-seq2. Um, in the previous uh, set of videos, looked at EDGE-R, um, and so this is another method. These are probably, at least in my area of research in plant biology, uh, and I think in mammalian, uh, the two most common uh, differentially expressed gene packages or analysis pipelines. Um, I know there are others, um, I think Callisto and Sailfish are two other ones, I'm not entirely positive, um, but I'm not so familiar with those, so I'm not going to try to teach you those. Uh, these two are, are great for, um, they work for any organism. So um, we'll also in another video compare the two because depending on what analysis pipeline you use for differential gene expression you're going to get different results um, and so we'll see how similar they are uh, between EDGE-R and DEC2. Uh, so let's get into it. Okay so I'm actually going to do this one as a markdown file. Um, I'm going to do it, this will be mouse DEC2 HTML file. Um, let's get rid of all this normal beginner junk they put in there. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is I need to um, put it up here. Let's load the required libraries for this analysis. Um, let me close all my previous crap up here too. Okay, there we go. Shiny and new. Um, so the libraries we are going to be using today are DEseq2. Um, and also, come on now, dplyr. And then ape glm. bit. Okay, so beautiful. Run those. Um, now um, let's load in our data. Oh, I gotta save this. So I have uh, mouse DEC2. Okay. Um, so now our count data. So this is the reads that are mapped to specific genes. Our we're going to use read CSV, um, and it's GLDS-102 underscore RNA underscore seek underscore unnormalized underscore counts that CSV. Okay, so we should have uh, this data frame here where we have the gene number annotation and we have across the top, I believe we have 12 uh, different mice. So we have six that are flight and six that are ground and then the counts. And as you can see here, um, what's interesting is we have fractional counts. Let's see if I can see one towards the bottom. There's a bunch of them, I think. Mm. There we go. I saw 1.5. 429.5, four, or 146.4. So the method that they used for alignment allowed for frank, uh, fractional counts, um, and that'll be a problem. So we're gonna fix that in a second. But first what I wanna do is call data. So this is the same as our targets in the um, edge R or the microarray uh, experiment. Um, so it's called Pheno, all capitals, data, Score mouse.csv. 
Um, and I wanted to tell it the separation is uh, commas because it's a CSV file, and then row names equals one. Okay, so let's run that. So now if we look at the column data, so we just have the uh, sample names, and then we have the group either zero or one. Uh, so zeros being flight, ground equals one. Okay, so let's do another chunk here. Um, so we need to add leveling. So DEC requires you to like specify levels um, for your data or for your um, your groups. So for us to do that, we're gonna say uh, call data dollar sign. Again, I see there's dollar sign group. Um, that is a factor which allows us to like level it of call data group and then the levels equals a collection of zero one. So this is what this is saying is take the group from call data, make it a factor where the levels are zero one and one, which it, they already were printed that way. Um, so let's run that. Now let's make sure we have the same number of individuals as well as groups. So we're gonna make sure that um, our call data group, oh sorry, we're gonna say all row names in call data So if all row names and call data, so let's run this quick. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's illogical. So um, let's just run row names, call data. So you can see we have all of our sample names, right? Then we're gonna run this command, dollar sign in, dollar sign. And then we're gonna say call names, count data. So what this is going to do is going to say take all of the row names from call data and see if they were are all in count data. So let's see if all these samples here for our call data are present up top here for our uh, count data. So that's just to make sure that we have everything squared away that all of our samples are accounted for in our targets or our groups. Uh, Too many of these. Okay. False. Interesting. Wait. What? It should not be. Oh. It is false because we have this column right here that says X, and we want to make this into our row names, not be its own column, right? So let's get this as false. That's exactly what we wanted to say. Okay. Um, so we're going to turn that into a our row names, that first column that's just called X. Um, but we're going to do that in addition to uh, one other thing here. So um, we need to round up the counts. Because DE seek two only allows integers as an input and not fractional numbers. So um, this depends on the method of alignment that was used upstream of this. So when they made this normalized data, or unnormalized data, whatever their alignment tool was that they used, 
created fractional shares and, or fractional uh, counts, and that does not jive with DEC. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to do count data, and we're going to pipe it down. Oops, pipe it down, and we're going to say mutate if is numeric, and then we're going to call ceiling. So what this does is it says, okay. You're, we're going to mutate or change the value if the column is numeric because our first column as you see oops uh, first column here this isn't numeric right this is a characters because it has letters in it so if it's numeric we're going to then use the ceiling function and so ceiling is just rounding up that's just what they call rounding up um, and then we're going to say count data of um, 2 through 13. So we're going to take, ignore the rows part, and we're going to say columns 2 through 13 of count data. And we're going to do S apply count data through 2 through 13. So this means go over each column and make it as integer. So it says, okay, for, col for count da data, columns 2 through 13, go over each row, or each column of count data 2 through 13, and make it an integer. Then, we're going to take our row names for count data, and we are going to say it's count data. Our first column. So we're saying, okay, for the row names, we're going to, for the row names of count data, we're going to make it the first column of count data. So we'll take that value in the first column and make it row names. And then we're going to count. Actually, I'm going to run this first and show you where we're at. Okay. So if we run this and we look at count data, see now we have, these are all, we got rid of the decimal points, right? So these are all integers now um, and they're rounded appropriately. Um, we've made our row names the same as our first column, but what we want to do is get rid of that first column, right? Because it's duplicate. So we have our row names and our first column are the same. So we don't need this X first column here. Uh, so we're gonna trim that off by doing count data is count data 2 through 13. So this says take only the rows of 2 through 13 and save it back override our previous count data. Um, and so if we run this, we should now have, oops, let's look at this one. We got rid of that first column. So now we've saved our genes in the row names and we only have. Um, our sample cell. So if we run this again to check if our names match, we well, we still get false. What's going on here? Row names in call data. All row names. Call data in call name. call data in call names call data. oh so there's an issue here so if we do call names count data and Row names. Oops, that's hmm. 
that's interesting. So it says that it's true for everything, that uh, the row names are equal to the column names. I don't know why this function is working funky like that. Say it false. Um, I wonder if it's character cl uh, class issue. All right, whatever the case. All right, so this works. So if we use row names call data equals row names or column names count data, we should get true that they all match. Um, okay, oh, also for this, I'm going to change the results equals hide at the top. Uh, the reason being is that as it rounds every number in the count data, it's gonna print it out. And so I think when I knitted this, it was like 900 pages or <laughs> something crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, yeah, so we're going to hide it um, because we want it to be rounded, but we don't have to see that every individual number of the 55,000 rows is rounded. Okay. So now. Um, we're going to do some actual differential gene expression, right? Um, so we're going to convert we're going to go DDS um, is the name of our where we're going to store our data is DE seek data set from matrix um, count data equals count data call data equals call data and then design equals by group. So what this is doing is this is going to import it into a, it kind of converts our count data into a readable format for DEseq. And we're saying that, um, should this, this one should be capitalized. Um, so read in the count data and then call it count data, read in the column data or call data, call it call data. And then the design of our experiment is going to be by the groups, which are in our call data, right? So our flight and our ground control. Um, so now what I want to do is uh, row sums counts of DDS is greater than two is greater than equal to four. So this is going to weed out all the low count uh, genes, like genes where we have observed no count changes between the two experiments or whatever, like there's just nothing mapped there, we don't need to run those, right? Um, so now DDS, we're going to call in the DEseq function to actually do the differential gene expression. Um, and then we're going to create a data frame called RES for results, is the results of DDE. S, which is our DEC analysis. All right, I'm gonna stop this chunk here and run these. Mm -mm -mm. Count data equals. Oh, maybe they should be the same there. Sure your capitals are all matching. Okay, so we got results. This is a large DE seek 
uh, object, um, which has all of our stuff in here, our row names, our expression, values. You can see that we sh really shrunk the number of rows from 55,000 down to 22 because of removing things that had very low counts. Um, all right, so we're doing well. Um, now, we're gonna do get the log full change, and we're gonna use this function called LFC shrink. Oh, let's see what it says here. So, um, it adds a shrunken log two fold change and standard error to a results table from a DEC run without log full change sh shrinkage. For consistency with results, the column names is used here, blah, blah, blah. Um, three shrinkage estimators for log full change are available. Uh, the Ape GLM uh, publication demonstrates that Ape GLM uh, outperformed the original normal shrinking estimator. Um, so we are um, adjusting for our comparison uh, the full change here. So we're going to do this for DDS and our coefficient is going to equal 2. And now we're going to um, res ordered 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 um, and that's going to be our results order res p adjust so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our results and we're going to order it by the p value Right, so our and we're doing multiple test correction like we did before, right? So that's why we use the p adjusted. Um, so we want to put all the significant genes, the genes that are differentially significant, right? So where genes are expressed more in space or less in space or more on ground and less on ground or whatever. The ones that are significantly different between space and ground, we want at the top, right? We don't have to go through twenty-two thousand rows and find, you know, which ones are significant or not. Um, and then we're going to run a summary of our results. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so we have our genes here now, um, our p adjust method here. So you can see these are all sig super significantly, well, super significant's not really a, a real thing. Uh, so they're significantly different between ground and control. Um, and so as you can see, uh, we have 325 that are upregulated, significant, 327 that are down. Um, we have 7,000 that are still considered low counts, even though we weeded out our counts. Um, okay, so we're doing well. Now, what we want to do is um, we're going to we want to pull out some of this data, right? So we're going to say um, FLT versus ground control. And we're going to say it's as a data frame. Our results uh, log to full change. OK, so here's all of our uh, flight and ground controls. Or our, uh, Significance, oh, this is head, flight versus ground control. Okay, we can see our full changes there. Okay. So now let's look at our data a little bit here. All right, so now what we want to do, let's do an MA plot. So plot MA, uh, res log fold change, y lim equals uh, negative two to two. So this sets our y axis, right? So we go up to two and down to negative two. Um, and then I'm going to run PDF 
file equals ma plot uh, flt verse gc.pdf. So we'll save this plot as a PDF. And then let me do dev dev auth. I'll explain that in a second here. Okay, so let's run this guy. What? Dev off. Okay, so we have our MA plot here. Um, so this just shows um, across uh, with a number of counts how far the log full change. And like we said in the last example, we want to see kind of a significant distribution here or a uniform distribution of uh, higher expression changes versus you know lower expression changes across the entire um, average of normalized counts, which is good. So uh, dev off. So let me so explain what this is doing. So first we did the plot, which we got right here, pretty basic. Then we did we used the PDF function to write this plot to a file, so it should be in your folder saved as MA plot flight versus ground control PDF. Then we do dev off, and what that means is turn off the device. So this PDF writing um, is considered a d uh, device. And so if you don't use dev off, the next time you try to use this PDF command, which we're gonna do for our next plot, it's not gonna be able to access it because it's still like tied up with this command. So if you turn uh, dev off, it will allow it, it frees it up again to be used in another command. Um, um, Let's do, what was, hold on. All right, so one more thing I wanna do. Um, let's save our differential expression results to file. Okay, so write CSV as data frame uh, res ordered, because we want them in order of p-value. We're going to do file equals mouse de seek dot csv. All right, so you run this, and it should write it to a csv file, which should be in your folder, your working directory, um, and then. One last thing, I know this video, we're running a little long here, um, but let's quick go through this. Um, so, let's see. Let's just do, um, so we're gonna plot the PCA of, actually we have to transform it first. Oh, do we? Yeah, we do, okay. So, um, so first thing, we, so let's perform a custom transformation. Um, so we can do our own transformation, estimate size factors, um, which, so uh, these generic functions provide basic inferences uh, to operations on a date uh, on and data access to count data sets. Okay, so let's run this on our count data set. Wait, what? They should put gas in there. Okay, and now what we're going to do is create our standard error. Um, Summarize experiment log two counts PDS normalize equals true plus one call data equals call data of DDS. 
All right, so um, so we in this example here, um, we just did our own normalizing for standard and with standard error. Um, and so what we can do though with this now is plat PCA D seek transform SE inch group equals group. So that's a lot of work just to do this PCA. <laughs> so let me show you. Um, the first thing though I'm going to do is PDF file equals PCA plot GC.pdf. Okay, so this is just a fancy way or a kind of longer way to do a PCA plot. So we want to see. Um, how these group when we do a, a um, principal component analysis. So what a principal component analysis is, is it takes multi-dimensional data and it's a way to, uh, to plot it. And what you want to see is these groups ground and control, or ground and flight, so zero being flight, one being ground, you want to see them grouped together. And that shows you kind of how tightly characterized your differential expression is uh, on biological replicates. So um, this data, this is an example of not a great PCA. Um, so you can, uh, it's, there's just so much overlap um, between the groups. I mean, if this dot wasn't here, you'd kind of have two groups, um, but it's not, it's not wonderful. And that's an issue with spaceflight data, right? So you're putting these animals up in space. Um, it's not easy to do a whole bunch of replicates, uh, right? Because you, your experiment, I had a collaborator whose experiment failed, um, and it's not like she can just rerun it, right? You have to go through like years of preparation for some of these experiments. Um, so that's just one of the, the curses of, of doing uh, space experiments. So, all right, I'm gonna stop there. This video is getting long. Um, so we've done our differential gene expression. We have our differentially expressed genes. We've written them to file. We've done a PCA and saw that our experimental setup isn't super great, uh, or our, our uh, data isn't clustering super well. Um, but our MA plot was okay. Um, and so in the next video, we're gonna run a pathway analysis um, to see the biological relevance of this data. Um, so sorry this ran long. Uh, differential expression, it just does, it's hard to break it up. Um, but at least we got through a good chunk here together. Um, I hope you like the video. I'll catch you in the next one.